everyone, welcome to another episode of Content and Links. Today we're gonna to be talking through SEO content strategy and specifically how to build a winning content plan. Here at Siege, we build project plans for every new client we take on. As part of this process, it sets the stage for a winning formula and end-to-end -end results at the end of the day. Because it's not just creating content, it's effectively building a winning strategy. And in this process, in this video in particular, walk you through all the considerations we think about in the project plan stage in order to set a winning SEO content strategy in the months to come. Winning content strategy is not a one-time event. So if you wanna make sure you stay on top of all the latest and greatest in a content marketing standpoint, make sure you jam that notification bell, give us a subscribe, a thumbs up, and we'll see you in future videos. So this video is part of a bigger piece on SEO content strategy. We've talked in the past about KOB analysis, and that is an important part of what we do for clients in order to make sure we're driving value and also doing it in the shortest amount of time possible by also looking at low difficulty. So make sure you check out that specific video. Also go to the full blog post to learn more about the end-to-end -end strategy. But specific to this video, we're gonna work as if we already have that data from the keyword research process and we actually know the keyword opposition and benefit scores for our project plan. And this will effectively allow us to understand how to best prioritize content in order to be the most effective in the months to come. So the many considerations you might have once you have a full set of topics for you to go after are as follows. First, once you have a set of keywords and keyword topics, and we always defer to topics and also the benefit of those topics, what you'll wanna do is make sure you've also included old content that you have. So that old content plus the new ideas that haven't been built yet, when they're melded together, what you wanna do is also apply a scope to each. So if you know an old update will only take you 10 hours to update, but a new piece of content will take 40 hours end to end, you should put that as a variable in your KOB sheet. This will refine the overall score because obviously if one takes four times as long as the other one that takes one fourth the time, if you can basically see double the benefit, even if the score is bigger for that four times one, if it doesn't equal four times, you should actually prioritize that first piece. So that element is important and make sure you're always thinking in the past, there is a mindset of doing new shiny things, but very often the content updates are the most high impact thing you can do. As a general framework, if you're a new business, would generally recommend filtering out any topics that are domain rating or domain authority 70 to 99. This allows you to set up ranking up front. So even if the scores net out high, you're not re reasonably gonna be able to rank for anything in any, any kind of short-term time horizon. From there, you can also think about what things might need to be promoted. You might be able to offset that by just being so confident in the asset. So for example, we have a how to increase website traffic post here at Siege. We originally did not have a high authority and we were able to pull off a page one ranking because we believe so much in the process we had there and that we would be able to generate hundreds of links to that asset. That was true and because of that, we're able to rank. But this is an exception. You have to be very confident in that topic that's high difficulty in order to ignore that framework. The first piece we always recommend on top of that is to make sure that you're starting with low writing difficulty topics. So if you're new and you aren't doing updates and this isn't a brand new thing uh, for your business, but if you're new to the company or you're an agency like us and you're new to that business, you kind of want to get to know the company. And hopefully you bring some specific vertical expertise, but the reality is you're always going to need to get to know the business. So we generally recommend starting with low writing difficulty topics as part of your prioritization framework. This will allow you to get to know the business in a low risk way, while the business also hopefully gives you feedback or you get to know the industry in a deeper fashion. Very often these beginner level topics will also level to uh, topics that are more important for the business. They may very often be high difficulty, but that would be a reason to actually overcome that and, and overwrite that, that need to rank immediately if you believe it's a necessary evil on your website. The kind of common reference point I give here is if you were a uh, cryptocurrency marketplace, you might want to start with what is cryptocurrency or what is Bitcoin. If you hopefully have some understanding of those verticals, but it also give you deeper knowledge as you ladder up to the more difficult pieces of the cryptocurrency landscape as you get to know that world. The next thing we always recommend is to start off with passive link opportunities up front, especially if they're low difficulty. So very often the traffic value will not equate to doing these, but if you know that the topics on that page say average out to around 100 plus links on average per, per result, 
and it's low difficulty or low search volume, it very often warrants doing that up front because that will power the rest of your strategy. So if you do a lot of these assets early, you see there's clear social proof of people linking out to those and you do a lot of them, they'll be able to make it so you don't have to do much manual outreach in later stages. So if you front load that and overweight the fact that you need conversions immediately, this effectively give you so much more leverage down the line where you can just focus on content creation as compared to more promotion. You should also space out your content strategies not to exhaust them or to diversify risk. So what we describe here is very often in certain industries, you might see certain topics make sense to do a ton of them. General recommendation for things like this is to diversify your approach. So maybe you could do a few of those and a few of other things and you can see how your strategy goes. I think if you're a confident SEO, you hopefully will know what you're doing and you will be able to overcome this reality. But the, thing, the reality is maybe you execute one page template and you just did one thing clearly wrong looking back, that can be very high risk to go down that rabbit hole and also have 20 things that all don't rank when you're trying to build momentum and justification for your content marketing in early stages. So generally spread those out to the degree you can, prove the model early and then go double down when necessary on those like scaled page frameworks. And if you learn from it and you realize one or two are not working, you potentially could iterate on those and then scale out the framework to confirm that as compared to spending a lot of time on a potentially inefficient strategy. Considering your content calendar is also a big part of this. So you might similarly want to diversify that for the, the benefit of being able to get more topics out there that are of interest. So if we just talked about SEO content strategy all day, you'd probably fall asleep. Thankfully, we try to mix things up with our topics, even though we're generally around that framework. So maybe you're uh, occasionally falling asleep when you watch our channel, but this will allow you more interest when you're talking about promotion, when you're talking about interactivity, when you're talking about how to hire people, that mixes things up, it keeps it interesting. Even if SEO by nature says, do things up front in this exact order, there's more to life than simply search. So that will make your blog index more interesting, it'll make your social calendar more interesting. You should all have that as part of your consideration set, for sure. Internal resources are another big consideration. So say you have developers on staff, you can't simply do 95 calculators all in one month, you'll want to spread that out accordingly. Similarly, maybe you're always writing about one topic that could get exhausting for certain people. You might want to mix that up even with the resources available. So think intelligently about your resources and spreading them out. Also thinking about the psychology of people who are working on these projects. That's another reason if, to mix things up and keep things interesting for all involved. On the reverse side of this, one thing you should consider though is whether or not you can scale certain topics. So we talked about diversification, but you also wanna be intelligent when the time is right, put the foot down and scale your approach because if you spread things out too much, you built a lot of inefficiency into your process. So an example I like to give is say you were doing a ton of topics on project management. There's general frameworks here, there's general learnings you would get if you kind of deep dive on project management as someone who's writing about that. There's a lot of different topics in that area. So if you batch them together, you effectively remove research, allowing you to write those faster. If you spread those out, you gave them to different writers, you're effectively duplicating that work, bringing, bringing up the time per post, and that's causing an issue. There is a balance as we've described so far. If you go too far, that's gonna wear on people. They're not gonna to wanna to write about that. That's gonna exhaust them. So consider all those factors, but for sure when necessary, think about scale and how you can lower the time per post to create a more efficient campaign. Finally, from a social calendar point of view, make sure you generally avoid any promotion in November and late December. We're overall trying to avoid that in any industry. There's rarely a time that's correct unless you're literally promoting about the holidays specifically because people are busy, they're out of the office a lot, it's just simply not going to work. Of course, also consider your own social calendars about what's interesting or not in your vertical. Maybe you have a big conference, maybe you have a big spike of interest on a certain thing. If you can tie Google Trends to when people are actually searching for those things, you can see more demand. So an example that, that I like to reference here, printable calendars is an idea, is something that seems obvious to publish in January. But if you actually check Google Trends, you'll see that when people search printable calendars, actually a second spike in August. So hypothetically, you could build uh, the asset in August or you could re-promote it in August because of that second spike 
or when the spike occurred. So even if something feels evergreen, there's going to be a spike somewhere that you could intelligently tie to. This will allow you to see the most success. Of course, you want to be able to rank uh, in front of that, so you have to consider that as part of the framework. But turns out a lot of teachers search for, or what we believe is are very often teachers, people resetting for the school calendar might be searching new calendars, and that's why that spike occurs. One other small but important detail is occasionally you need to, as the writer and researcher, be humble enough to say when you need help on a topic. So I would suggest in thinking about a project plan, noting when you need a subject matter expert, trying to space that out to be cognizant of the subject matter expert's time, and then jump on the phone with that person, ask them some good questions about the topic, batch those questions about several topics if possible to save time for them. This will all help accelerate your learning and take things deeper than just uh, Googling and actually doing true research with that expert. And finally, you've got a lot of this project plan data. It's based on the keyword opposition and benefit analysis framework we've talked about. Hopefully you now feel confident about your prioritization. At the end of the day, suggest recalculating this once a year. It's kind of a good framework for identifying change. A lot changes in the world in 12 months time. You get new data, you learn how things went, you get conversion information. That's all gonna kind of bring you back to uh, the best results possible for your campaign. So hopefully this end-to-end -end SEO content strategy is of use to you and you can set a efficient and high-performing project plan when you get to the other side of this. So if you like this, please hit a thumbs up or notification bell. Let us know what you thought in the comments and really appreciate you watching.